In today's video, I'm going to show you how to build AI agents with OpenAI's relatively new framework, Swarm. It's garnered a lot of popularity recently, so I'm going to explain it to you and then also give you my thoughts at the end, so make sure you stay until the end. Like I mentioned, this is OpenAI's Swarm AI agent framework, and it already has 15,000 stars in just a month. Now, the thing I want you to note here is that this is an experimental educational framework. The primary goal of Swarm is to showcase the handoff and routine patterns of AI agents. I'll get to more of that after we're done showing you some examples. And just make sure you read that says it's not intended to be used in production. The goal is to make the coordination execution of these AI agents lightweight, meaning there's not a lot of heavy, heavy processes in the background making this happen. So it does this through two abstractions, agents and handoffs. An agent encompasses instructions and tools and can at any point choose to hand off the conversation to another agent. For example, we ask, what's the weather in New York? So there's a triage assistant. Well, it's going to use the function transfer to weather assistant, hand this off to the weather assistant. It's going to call the tool or function get weather in New York City, and then return the output that it's 67 degrees in New York. A quick code example of this is we have a sales agent. We just instantiate an agent class, give it the name sales agent. Then we have a function that just returns that sales agent, all right? This is how we're gonna transfer wherever we're at in an AI agent conversation to the sales agent. It's gonna actually return that agent. So now we have another agent is instantiating a class called agent and the function it's given is transfer to sales. And what that's gonna do is then when the agent is called, its function is to transfer to sales. So the AI agent is gonna see that, it's gonna execute that function, which means it's then gonna return the sales agent. So it's handing off its functionality or what it's supposed to do to the next agent. It also introduces something called context variables, which isn't new, they renamed it new, but this is similar to like inputs and crew AI. So we say client.run, but that now has context variables where the username is John. So now we're gonna re reprint the response agent name and the context variables. So because it's going to be transferring to sales, it's gonna return that function, which has the agent, which is the sales agent, and the context variables from that agent, which is department sales. So it's printing the agent name, which is sales agent, and then the username and the department because it has both context variables for the talk to sales function. Let's say we have this user request that says, I want a refund. Well, now that's gonna be given to a triage agent, which all the triage agent does is decides whether to transfer to the refund agent or the sales agent. So because it's saying, oh, I see this as a refund request, I'm gonna transfer you to the refund agent. And inside the triage agent, you know, we could give it context variables that could be passed to the refund agent. Now let's look at this code example. All right, all I've done is I created an agent's Python file I have two functions here, a get weather and a send email. Of course, it's not sending live weather or live emails. This is just to kind of show you how this works. And then I defined one agent that's called a weather agent to give it instructions and I gave it both of those functions. And then I created a run.py function and this will all be in my GitHub. So don't worry about this. Just kind of follow along so you can see how this is working. They give us a REPL or REPL, however you want to pronounce that, which is read, evaluate, print, and loop. So it's just kind of this demo loop of always talking to the agent. It's kind of like a while true, but they also have some other functions in there um, that we don't need to worry about. But so I'm going to run this demo loop, give it a weather agent, and I also want it to stream this. Okay, so I just run the PY function and it's saying starting the swarm CLI. So as a user, what do I want to say? Uh, can you give me the weather? Okay, I'm gonna start out with this and this should, should I don't think this is gonna work, right? Oh yeah, so the weather agent says, could you please specify the location for which you would like to know the weather? Because it's still checking to see if I actually have a city giving it. Let, let's do Tampa Bay. Okay, it's still, okay, so it's still gonna give me the same temperature, right? Cause that's, uh, that's hard coded in, but it's saying I'm gonna use the function get weather to return the temperature in Tampa Bay. Now let's see if I can ask it to send an email. I said, can you send an email, please? Please provide the recipient's email address, all that blah, blah, blah. I said the email address is, I gave it some dummy email address, uh, a subject and a body content. So now it's sending the mail. So it knows to now hand off and use the, well, not hand off to another agent, but knows to use the function send email instead of get weather. Now I have another example, which is just coming from their GitHub. This is called the personal shopper. So there's essentially three agents here. And this is an example of the triage agent. So if we scroll down here, you can see we have a triage, a triage agent, a sales agent, and a refund agent. 
So we're going to give some command. It's going to go to the triage agent and they're going to determine whether it's going to go to the refund agent or the sales agent. So let's see how that works. And also there's a database already here with just some sample data of my transaction history. Okay. So we're again running in another demo loop and he is just printing out what's currently in the database. Um, don't worry about the database errors. This is just a test to show you how it works. Now, what I'm going to first do is say, I would like a refund. It's going to say, can you please specify the item or order number for which you want to refund? So I'm going to say the order number is eight. Now it's saying I will transfer you to the refunds agent for assistance with your refund request. So it kind of acted as like a little gatekeeper saying, okay, as you've talked before with, um, you know, either talking on the phone or with live agents, they need some more information before they actually pass you on, you know, on your phone call and you have to press in all the different dial tone or different numbers to get to where you actually want to go. And they have all these questions that's similar to what this is doing. Or I can say, I would like to purchase some shoes. And then it should say, I will transfer you to the sales agent to assist you with placing your order. Please hold on a moment. Now I'm not actually going to place any orders, but with these demos, and they have a few more on their GitHub, but there's not really much happening on their GitHub. They kind of came with some examples. They might, they updated a little bit, but as far as I'm really concerned, this is really just to kind of showcase um, this kind of different pattern of using an AI agent framework. Okay, so here are my thoughts on this. And I know I kind of went over the examples quickly, but there's kind of a reason for that. I wanted to showcase to you because I've seen it hyped up on LinkedIn. I've seen other creators talk about it and kind of think that it may be the future, but I want to just sit down and talk a second about it. The first thing is Autogen is actually doing this. They're reconstructing their whole framework to kind of be this pattern, right? They, I think they also do something called topic and subscriptions, but it's similar to this. Now, with that said, as of right now, OpenAI Swarm framework is a little bit simpler to understand. But the next thing I want to say is that this, it says it's experimental and you should not use it in production. They said they're not even going to look at issues or pull requests, which means if there's no pull request, that means that nothing that we say that we think can improve it is going to matter, right? They're just going to do whatever they want to do with it. it is no, there's nothing that's going to be um, from the actual user to help them improve it. And also there are already AI agent frameworks out there that have way more integrations that are more, there are more tutorials on and that work right now and they do more. Now, unless OpenAI comes out and says, hey, we're going to put some development into this, we're going to listen to user feedback and we really want to make this an AI agent framework going forward that we want most people to use, that, well, that's a different story and I will, you know, I don't know if I believe that's actually going to happen. It may, I could be wrong, but you know, we'll see. I really made this video because I, I wanted to kind of like maybe ground some people that have been, you know, other people that have been talking, really hyping up. But even on LinkedIn, I've seen people say that this is the future. And like, I, I don't see that rate. I'm not saying it can't be the future, but right now they're literally saying it's experimental and not to use it in production. And if they're not taking any user feedback, then I don't see how it can be the future, right? And they're, they don't have many updates and maybe they will soon. Maybe they'll completely change direction, but you know, don't follow the hype just because a something came out from open AI, right? That doesn't mean it's going to be good. And I'm not saying this is bad, right? This, you know, this style of handing off to another agent and it determining the tool and returning the output, you know, that's, that's good, right? It's educational about how a simple AI agent framework can, can actually work, but you know, just take it with a grain of salt, right? Just leave it as that that it is experimental and it's kind of a fun thing to play around with. So you get the idea of how AI agent frameworks work. Of course, I could be blowing smoke and you don't have to listen to anything I've said. The only reason I'm kind of giving my thoughts is because since last October, I've really been working with um, a lot of AI agent frameworks. You know, I started with chat dev, then I did a bunch with Autogen and now I'm working a lot with Crew AI. And you know, I've done, I worked on a lot of integrations with like Llama Index and Langchain since then. And with all of those things that are constantly being worked on, constantly being updated, updated, getting user feedback, understanding what they are trying to do. OpenAI could come in and do something a little different to make a simpler framework because not everything needs to be complicated. You don't need complicated things all the time, right? You could do something very simple and this can work. I mean, I can see this working for, you know, in different aspects, but practically speaking, you know, I just wouldn't use this, right? I just wanted to really showcase to you what it is, 
simply how it works. And I didn't actually want to put too much time in it myself. Now I'm going to leave it on my GitHub and I'm going to push this so you guys can see the code. Um, and if something changes in the future, you know, I will come back and I will talk about it more. But besides this, this may be the last time I actually really talk about it on a video unless I'm doing some sort of comparison or I don't know, whatever that may be. But just let you know, this is my opinion. You can certainly have a different one. But in my opinion, I wouldn't worry too much about this framework. All right, well, that was a Swarm framework. As I kind of mentioned, I wouldn't necessarily recommend using this until they say it's going to go out of the experimental stage and it's not just a way to test how AI agents could work with this kind of uh, handoff pattern, right? There are already agent frameworks that you know kind of do that, such as Autogen, and ones that are more established that are always being worked on and we know will continue to be worked on um, and, you know, in the future. Thank you for watching. Here's some more videos for you to watch. I have links in the description. Make sure to check them out and I will see you next video.